Hey guys, it's Drew again. I wanted to do a top 30 cards in my collection, but I wanted to do it my way, old school style. So let's jump. So this time of year, a lot of different guys put out, you know, top 20, 30, 50, 100 cards in their collection. Could be favorites, could be value. And I've never done one, but I thought, you know what, it'd be kind of fun. But the truth is, is I don't really actively buy cards. I'm not constantly looking at prices. I don't really know. I've never had or even looked at VCP or any other platforms like that. So I kind of want to go through the cards that are currently in my collection, talk about how I purchased them way back in the day and uh, how we did it the old way with a Beckett. So this is actually the Beckett Almanac and I believe this is the 2009 edition and it is huge and it had, it was just like the price guides you guys may have had back in the 80s and 90s, has high and low prices for all these different cards and, um, and it was pretty accurate, kind of, but I mean, nowhere near up to date, minute by minute like they do nowadays. So what I used to do, and I wanna explain how I did this was, um, I have never been a collector of eye appeal, centering, graded, everything I buy is raw. Um, and everything I've always wanted was just, uh, I just wanted the card. I couldn't believe I owned that card, no matter what the card was. So what I would do is, I had a few limitations, as in I didn't want a huge hole in it, I wanted all of the card. I didn't care about corners. I didn't care about centering. I didn't care about back condition. I didn't care about pinholes. I didn't care about a lot of different things, creases, spider creases or whatever. I just wanted the card. So what I would do is, is if I was looking for a specific card, um, I had this, this scale and range of what I would do. And what I would do is uh, I would look at high book, which was near mint prices, which nobody could afford that stuff. And what I would do is I would, depending on what era that card landed in, would depend on how much I would bid on a card. So if it was pre-war, what I would do is I would take high, uh, high uh, value and I would do 20% um, of whatever that was, and that's what I put in for my bid. And if I lost it, oh, there'd be another one. Uh, if it was, um, we'll say the golden age, so post-war all the way up to um, through the 50s, so 40s and 50s, I would do 10%, 10% of book value. And then in the 60s and 70s, I would do 20%. And then anything from the 80s and on, I would do 100%. And I knew that's what it was going for because there were so many more of those. So keeping that in mind, that's what I would pay for cards. So if a card had booked for $500, I would spend $50 if it was a, you know, a card from the 50s, let's say. So going by that, I decided I wanted to go through my collection and kind of just rediscover what it was and show the cards that I have, but what I would have paid for them back in the day. I would have gone on eBay, I would have put in that number, I always added 77 cents, so it would have been like 50, 77, and I put that in and let it ride. I lost way more auctions than I ever won, but I would win some, and it was just fun doing this kind of thing. And that's how I ended up with the collection that I have. So I'm gonna go through my top 30. Now, I will say this, there's a few cards I didn't put in here just because it was the same player over and over, uh, but I kind of want to give you guys an example of what cards was was like back in the 2000 to, say, 2012, 14, when I was really doing this a lot on, on eBay. Kind of the wild west of eBay. So here we go. So my number 30 card, 1956, tops, Jackie Robinson card. And 25 bucks because it was a $250 card, 10%, $25 for a 56 Jackie. Um, another thing before I get too far into this is, remember, cards back then valued all over the place and with the way I did it. So there's modern cards mixed in here too, so it's kind of funny how they all landed. So come saying that, coming in at number 29 is my 1989 Upper Deck Ken Griffey Jr. valued at $40. Coming in at number 28, and this is where you guys are gonna be like, are you kidding me? But this is the way it was, uh, is my 1914 Polo Grounds Honus Wagner coming in at 50 bucks. $50 for a Honus Wagner playing days Honus Wagner. Um, if you think that was crazy, wait till you see this one. Uh, this one was not in the Beckett because it was not a, um, it wasn't a set that was listed in there, but I just did what I paid for it. So uh, coming in at number 27 is my 1933 Sonella Babe Ruth at 50 bucks. And the reason this was $50 is because I was able to get two of them shipped for $100, and this is the one I kept. I sold the other one, so 50 bucks for a Playing Days Babe Ruth. There you go. Um, and coming in under that is my uh, 1953 
tops, satchel page, uh, coming in at $50. Coming in under number the 53 satchel page uh, is my number 25, which is my Red Heart Stan Usual, which uh, there are a few cards in here that are in displays, so I didn't take those out of the displays, but here's a picture of it here. So that is also a $60 card. Then coming in at number 26, I've got my Playball 41 Pee Wee Reese Rookie Card at 60 bucks. And then right below that would be my Red Heart Mickey Mantle, uh, which totaled out at 70 bucks. And uh, so here's a picture of that. And then underneath that, at number 22, I have my 1948 Stan Musial rookie card at $80. So we're getting into some big bucks here, coming up almost to triple digits. Um, tied with that is number 21, my 1953 tops, Jackie Robinson, $80 card. Crazy, crazy it got that high. Uh, but uh, tied with that also, sorry, is also my 19... 93 SP Derek Jeter uh, at $80. So yes, you could get a Derek Jeter rookie or a Stan or a um, Pee Wee Reese, uh, sorry, or a Jackie Robinson 53 for the same price. But slightly above that is my number 19 card, which is my 1952 Burke Ross Joe DiMaggio, topping $100. And I've got a number of cards here at the $100 range, so I'm going to show those off real quick. Tied with that is also my 1949 Leaf, Stan Musial, at $100. My uh, 1953 Bowman, Pee Wee Reese. My 1954 Tops, Ted Williams. My 1968 Rookie Card of... Nolan Ryan. Now remember, in the 60s, it would have been 20%, so it was a $500 book. 20% makes it $100. Uh, but slightly above that, uh, I'm sorry, tied with the same thing, is my 1998, and I love this card. Absolutely love this card. But my 1998 uh, Chirography, I don't even know how to say it, Ken Griffey Jr. Autograph, which is just an insane autograph. I love that card. Absolutely love it. I don't think I've shown it on here on YouTube. But also tied with the Nolan Ryan rookie, as well as the autograph Ken Griffey Jr., is none other than the great 1994 SP A-Rod. Uh, oh my, have things have changed. But $100 and you can get an A-Rod rookie. So there you go. Uh, and then just above that, at $120, uh, and this is crazy, a playing day's 1913 national game, Ty Cobb, for $120. There you go. Um, right above that, I've got a 1956 Topps Mickey Mantle coming in at $150. Tied with a 56, 56 Topps Mantle is also a 52 Topps Traded Cal Ripken Jr. Rookie, $150. Um, also at $150 would be my 1952 Maze from Bowman. Beautiful card. Absolutely my favorite Willie Mays card. And uh, then I also have a 1998 Significant Signatures Sandy Koufax card, which is also in a Sandy Koufax display, so I didn't take that one out. Um, right underneath the, or right above the Sam, Sandy Koufax, we're coming in now to some, uh, well, I mean, they're all good cards, let's be honest with you, but uh, we're coming into some cards. So at $180 would be my 1954 Tops. Hank Aaron rookie card. My 1952 tops high number, Pee Wee Reese, 180. And then slightly above that, at $200, is my 1953 Bowman, Stan Musial, tied for the same price with my 19, I'm sorry, 1952 Bowman, I said that wrong. Then my 1953 Bowman, Mickey Mantle. There it is. One of the only graded cards I still have graded. Um, also tied at $200 would be my T206 Trist Speaker. And then my final two cards. Number two is my 1955 Tops Roberto Clemente rookie card. Love the card. Beautiful. Remember when I won this. Great story, too. Anyway. And then finally, the last card uh, in the set is by far my most expensive. Where, as soon as it entered my collection, 
it became the most expensive card in my collection. It always will be the most expensive card in the collection unless I get rid of it because it is by far and away um, just not even close. The fact that I own it, it was one of those right place, right time kind of situations. I can't believe I have it, but coming in at number one, my number one card is my 1933 DeLong Lou Gehrig. And uh, I'm happy to have this. Of course, I'm happy to have all these cards. But uh, that's a little bit of a spin on the cards that I have, the top 30. Um, obviously, they've gone, the, the, the um, collecting has gone all over the place. Values have gone all over the place. The uh, technology with, you can have up to the minute, you know, what cards are actually selling for and all this stuff. I didn't have that back in the day. Um, you know, we didn't have smartphones to walk around and check stuff. You had to go to your, your PC and look things up if you wanted to do like, um, you know, eBay past auctions or whatever. But uh, I thought it'd be a fun spin on it. Um, to be honest, I'm probably not going to add a whole lot in the next year. So this may be the only one I ever do. But uh, I thought it was kind of fun. It was definitely fun for me going back through, getting that old Beckett out. I mean, how much fun is this? Um, and just going old school, I realized how small the print is. Uh, it didn't seem so small, you know, 15 years ago. But now, for some reason, um, you know, my eyes aren't what they used to be. But, uh, but it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun going through this. So... Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. This may have been more of an exercise for me than entertainment for you, but I appreciate you coming along. And uh, I hope you guys have a very Merry Christmas, a great ho happy holiday season. And uh, I look forward to, to doing more videos and seeing what's up in the future. So until next time, you guys be good.